others, and many more to create awareness and entrepreneurship creation and leadership among the stakeholders. I, now, I would like to give a small introduction on JP Innovation and Incubation Center, JIS. JIT Noida has constituted a JP Incubation and Innovation Center. The mandate of JIIC at our institute is to formulate institutional innovation goals, conduct awareness program for teachers and students to encourage multidisciplinary research and IPR projects. To strengthen national and international research collaboration and funding, along with this JIIC also carry out regular assessment and scouting of IPR potentials from Department, Health Institute, Departments and Development of Incubator Facility. JIIC showcases innovation through web pages, blog writings, magazines for research reflection. The other mandate of JIIC is to develop innovation alliance through alumni. Now, first of all, I would like to invite our JIIT alumni entrepreneurs to share their story of success among us and to motivate us. I request Ms. Ria Rastogi to start with her experiences. Uh, thank you so much. Uh ma'am for the amazing introduction and for actually it like it brings me so much pleasure to actually see like the alma mater jp uh, to be starting this incubation cell and actually focusing on the entrepreneurs because okay, so i like just an introduction about myself and how i started i was in the 2011 to 2015 batch i did electronics and communication from jp i met bhavya my husband and co-founder in JP. So uh, that had, like JP set the footing for everything completely and perfectly right. It could be the career and also the personal aspect. I went just after my studies at JP to uh, Singapore to pursue my master's. And then I went to Germany to uh, continue doing my job and complete my thesis. There, me and Bhavya came up with this idea from very personal inspiration to create brain wearable products. Uh, Neufni is a wearable product which monitors your EEG, your brain activity, and converts it into user understandable format, such as focus levels, stress levels, relaxation levels, all those things, so that we work on our mental health on a proactive basis. But that's about the product and the company, which I'm not going to focus on today. Uh, but about how I, as a complete engineer who did my master's in semiconductors, integrated circuit designing, worked for German automotive company, but then came to entrepreneurship. Uh, it's an amazing journey and it's an amazing path in career. Like it should be promoted more. My father is an entrepreneur, but I couldn't understand why he did this, why he was okay with not having a personal life, why he so passion passionately and crazily loved his work and with no balance. Uh, it brings a lot of a huge impact and you get to work on so many different things that it's just outstanding. And one thing that I want people to know that there is no right way to become an entrepreneur. Uh, I don't idealize anybody as an entrepreneur because I feel that everybody has their own path. I came from a completely engineering background. Parents were into business, but that um, was not something that I was kind of looking towards or anything. But uh, so no matter if you want to become an entrepreneur, no matter what background, what degree, what part of the world you are in, you can focus towards and you can create an impact. You can change the world, like not only create something that helps people, but also create jobs. Like I feel so responsible for my employees. Like sometimes they even feel like kids to us, you know, like not that I'm, I'm a mother, but it you feel responsible for their careers you feel responsible that they've trusted in something that you've created and that in itself is one very big thing apart from the product and the impact that you're trying to create uh the second thing that i would like to focus on is that uh, it's always the journey so i personally as an entrepreneur make sure that while the product and the goals and everything should be achieved in due course of time to, for your investors to be happy, for you to create significant impact, for the company to be up and running. But um, I make sure that I cherish the team 
it's one of the most important things to me uh so i make sure that i am creating different leaders within my company rather than having just you know slave away and do some work we make sure there is personal growth that maybe in the first 3 months they are not contributing anything to me but maybe in 6 months 9 months they've learned so much and grown so much as a person and an individual that their contribution is just insignificant because you few things unfortunately you can't learn in degrees what you can learn is the hard work become the right human and how to take different challenges so i know uh, how these different multiple exams that we had at jp you know t1 t2 t3 it it's like you know telling you every two months there is a challenge coming up and how you have to take it it was not the score that mattered it was the stress of taking those tests and how you can balance those scores how you can balance that stress on a day to day basis and that's what i think t1 t2 t3 taught me rather than the scores and i sometimes i have good marks and bad marks both so i don't want to remember my numbers <laughs> but i do remember sitting outside and you know taking that stress and pressure learning how to tackle those challenges on a recurring basis and entrepreneurship is just like that but more significant every week there is a t1 t2 t3 coming <laughs> to our heads uh I think that would be uh, from uh, my end. Uh, I hope it was uh, helpful and it was uh, valuable. Yeah, thank you, Ria. Thank uh, you. Would you like to? Uh, what is the size of your uh, company right now? Sir, fifteen people. Fifteen. Very proudly, we have taken uh, five. Uh, first in first year we had five interns from jp shabeem sir helped us get those technical interns today we have i think uh, me and bhavya both the co-founders are from jp and then we have one more uh, employee who is from jp so what were the main challenges like in the beginning sir team is one of the biggest challenge the biggest challenge the partner is very important the person who you start your business with Uh, your co-founder so me and bhavya were there thankfully so it was a little bit easy there but since we were coming from engineering background people told us that you have to get financial people business people uh, it was very difficult to find that perfect mixture you know it's like uh, people say entrepreneurship is like a marriage so you have to make sure that you get the right person you have to yeah. like thankfully for me both are the same thing but you'll spend more time with your co-founder than your partner so you need to make sure that you are in sync with them so building the team hiring the right people training the people is very difficult is one of the building the product was way easier than building a team who trusts in your vision who loves your product works hard for your product as much as you do but i can say proudly like now the 15 people that i have out of those when i become an ipo in 4 to 5 years a lot of these will be with me Okay. So, thank you, Ria. Uh, thank you so. Uh, just a minute, thank some. Thank you so much, ma'am. We are uh, really proud as a student of JP. You really motivate us. Thank you so thank much. You so much. <laughs> uh, before going to Aditya, uh, let me uh, welcome the uh, participants who have just joined. A very good morning to one and all present here. Thank you for joining us uh, on this Sunday, which otherwise used to be time to relax. Attending an online meeting on Sundays is often boring and not interesting. But I assure you that today's discussions and uh, talks will not only be interesting ones, but it will inspire you to do something new and challenging. You we'll learn a lot from success stories of our alumni. We'll also have a special invited speaker, Professor Rajesh Tandon, who has kindly agreed to be with us despite his extremely hectic schedule. We'll also interact with our esteemed faculty member, Dr. Suma Don, and our student Ayush, who will discuss about their funded project. And my special thanks to Dr. Amarjit, Dr. Shamim, Dr. Ashwini Mathur for their overwhelming support. in organizing today's event i once again welcome you all to this event to mark the world entrepreneurs day over to sampriti thank you so much sir for inviting everyone 
Now I would like to invite Mr. Aditya Goyal to begin with his success story. Hey, hi, uh, hi everyone. Good morning. I'm Aditya Goyal. Uh, great to be here. And uh, <clears throat> I have a presentation. I, I thought I thought it'll be it'll give, give a visual aid to the online meeting, which typically is very difficult to uh, hold attention. A little bit about me first. So I am from uh, Delhi, born, brought up here. I was at DPS RK Puram and then at JP for 2007 to 2011. I did my ECE engineering. And then I was at IAFT Delhi uh, for my MBA. And then I started working in the FMCG industry, which I did for about four years. And then I started up. So my, my company, uh, Love In Store, is about uh, five and a half years old now. I'll, of course, cover you know what we do and also give you some snippets of what sort of I have I have uh, enjoyed during my time at Love In Store. Uh, yeah, let me just try and just share. Yeah. Perfect. I, th I think it should be visible uh, to everyone now. Okay, so I run two companies. Essentially, it's one service only, but we split into two legal entities. We are called Love in Store and Account. You can check us out on, on LinkedIn and on our website. We're fairly active there. Uh, I think first of all, you know, when I was invited, I think my first question was that you know I was not a I was not a great engineer. It took me quite a bit of time and effort to sort of get there. Of course, I enjoyed the rigor and I look back and appreciate it. But yeah, I was I was a six pointer. I would want to put it out there so that any any six pointers here, I would like to tell them that yeah, there, there is so much more to life that that will come in future. Going a bit further, right? So what do we do? So especially we service the FMCG industry. FMCG industry you will have brands like a Reckitt and a Godrej and a Britannia and an ITC. Uh, what we exactly do is three services, and I'll try and cover them quickly. Uh, many of you would have been to a Reliance or a Big Bazaar. Uh, you know, or a DMART, where you would have interacted with someone who's a promoter, whose job is to merchandise the shelf and to interact with you as consumers. So what we have done is we provide these promoters as a tech-enabled service, which means that if, let's say, one of my clients, are <coughs> Wow Skin Science is one of my clients, if they need promoters pan India, we'll be the company hiring, training, deploying, managing the promoter, their technology. We have built AI-based image recognition on top of it to give them insights. That is one service. Second service is e-payments, where we transfer money on behalf of the FMCG companies to 1.2 lakh Kirana stores on a monthly basis. Uh, this is these are India's top 1 lakh 1.2 lakh Kirana stores where we pay them money on behalf of the company. And then e-commerce, where we cover you know e-commerce listing content, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these are the three services that we do. If you are anywhere close to FMCG, you will understand it. If you are a consumer of FMCG, uh, you will probably understand. Uh, Sorry, this better. So these are my current list of clients. So, you know, if you've bought anything from a decade, Britannia, Mondly, Starter Consumer, Zydus, Colgate, Dabur, Marico, et cetera, et cetera, all of these are our customers. So you would have come across some people, uh, you know, from my company sort of talking to you, selling this to you and all of those things, right? Okay, let me go back a little bit. Okay, my life timeline, right? So in 2011, I, I finished from JP and I was a typical engineer with 90, 80, 70, which means I got a 90% and then 80% and then 70% and then 60% in my MBA. So after that, I went to IFT and then I quit GCPL for a higher paying job and I got fired. So when anybody asks me that, you know, why did you start up? My reason is very simple. I got fired from my last job at uh, RB. That was 8th of December 2016. And I always say that that was the most uh, life changing event or experience of my life. Uh, 2017, 1st January, another 22 days from the day I got fired, I said that, you know, maybe this is a time to give it a shot. I could, of course, look for another job, which I did on the side. But I go, went to a co-working space in Okhla. Uh, Okhla is in South Delhi. Like I, I live in Greater Kailash, so I thought, you know, I'll figure out something. So I got a nice co-working space uh, for 8,500 rupees a month. Started from there, April 2017, my last client, uh, boss or last sort of company became my first client. And then we set up the entire business. So 2022, FI 2022, we've closed with the INR 240 crore turnover. That has been our journey of about five years, five financial years. Uh, this is where what I love sharing. So my company then was called uh, Watson Store. Uh, this was my, the first PPT I had put together, about 10 slides, which I was taking to people and short sort of showing them. This is the co-working space. This is my seat, if you can see it. So this is where I used to sit, and this is from where we started. Uh, that's how it started. How is it going? Uh, so we have a core team of 210 people that sit out of across our offices. We have our head office in Gurgaon, and then regional offices across Bombay, Bangalore, Chennai, Ahmedabad, and Calcutta. 
we have a field team of 4500 people uh, they are deployed across 330 cities uh, we are the largest player in the industry uh, we manage money for about 200 crores and then last year we uh, closed at 240 crores revenue and we are bootstrapped and profitable and never raised money from any investors or vcs so that's been uh, our business journey uh this is one of my favorite photos uh this is our new office and this is our team so we just moved into a new office in gurgaon uh in june uh june 2022 like about about one and a half months two months ago so this is the photo we took on the first day so that is all of us you can see me kneeling down and uh probably uh the most amount of pride if i feel about something is this our team is very sweet if you can see all of them are dressed in white so we had sort of done a theme on the first day of the new office right uh this i have covered already uh you can read about us right so i have a tedx talk you may want to check that out you know we are covered in business world i was a, a part of the young entrepreneurs award emerging businesses award etc etc but what i want to speak about more importantly is my why because a lot of times the most common questions that we get at entrepreneurs is why right uh see i was in a well paying job right of course i got fired and that was a big trigger to sort of you know looking at that okay maybe i want to start up right but i could have cracked you know various jobs but this is what my why was i think first was my privilege because i always tell people that you know i grew up in in a big city i went to a you know good school branded school uh, you know dps and i had no loans and i had some good savings as well right so there was a lot of privilege that i came for from and what happens is that once you reach a point where sort of you know a big incident like you know getting fired or something like that hits you i became all the more aware of my privilege i said oh okay i mean you know i got fired but my house can still run for a long amount of time so i was still living with my parents at that point in time not married and uh, you know that was a big reason a uh, second was my education you know after dps jp and ift i had a lot of access to a huge network i thought i can leverage that uh, next was my experience i was from the fmcg industry uh, which essentially meant that it's a very very well connected very small industry in fact uh, tapan uh, is also from the similar industry he was there for a bit right and the idea is that everybody knows everybody so it's fairly easy to build a network and sort of uh, you know solve some problems there next is job creation so this i remember from when i was 21 that you know i in my interviews at mba campuses you know when i was doing my interviews for ift and narsingh etc uh they asked me what is your you know goal in life i remember the most common conversation was short term long term goal and i always used to say that i want to create 100 jobs uh i we have i've now done 4700 probably i want to do 10000 now of course your goal post keeps moving but the idea is that why not you know why not if if life has given you a chance and an opportunity then why not and last is i think something which plagues all entrepreneurs is uh, messiah syndrome right if i don't do it who will uh i i don't think it's a good thing i don't think it's a bad thing as well but sometimes if it motivates you helps you do certain things uh that's a good thing right and i had two big comforts right so i had already cracked two jobs so while i was sitting at the co-working space and i was putting together my watson store ppt i was able to crack a job at you know a big food tech company as a head of sales i was able to crack a job at an fmcg company i said that okay great so if i can crack a such a well paying job you know as of now after getting fired why don't i give my business two years and then sort of see if it works out or not and i did and obviously it sort of worked out right i'll share some key learnings uh, you know i think that is what probably people won't want to know uh, i first of all really really resonate with what ria mentioned people right people will be your biggest asset you know take care of your people and they will take care of your company right i mean we did a pay cut during covid and paid everyone back by the year end we did not do any layoffs what is most important is people right today we have a team of 210 people everybody is talking about the great resignation in the last one year our attrition numbers are are at about 4% with such a large team in place so i think one key learning is that you know as an entrepreneur you know don't have that founders bias thinking that you know you will do everything on your own beyond a certain point in time you will have to build a good relationship with people you will have to give them freedom and have to sort of give them the ownership that they deserve uh second is of course success right so i think success will make you famous but your humility will make you memorable and that's what i tell people that you know even today there are so many people who reach out to me on linkedin sometimes for jobs sometimes for advice i work with a lot of you know young startups i am an investor in about 3 4 b2c sort of fmcg companies the idea is that you know the more you reply the more you reach out to people you also learn it also keeps you humble 
you know so never sort of have that distance and don't let that success go to your head you know probably the day that happens is when the downfall essentially starts our uh, third is business is not easy right uh, i would still say that you know business comes with a lot of flexibility like uh, i'm talking to you in a t-shirt on a sunday morning this could have been a monday or a tuesday morning as well you know now that the company is fairly established but it is not easy especially we are in a service business in india we are a b2b business right the thing is that it takes so much time to make a sale it is so difficult to service because the customers expectations are always going to be very very high plus bootstrapped means that we have to wait to hire right first you will get money then you will get people which essentially means that a lot of struggle sort of needs to go in in the first 3 to 4 years and i always say that you know do the business once you know that if everything goes wrong everything stops working you can't stop working right as an entrepreneur you are sort of there you know whenever i make a pitch to clients i am still of course a part of a lot of sales calls mostly and i tell them that sir i am not going anywhere so don't worry <laughs> no matter what happens i'll sort of be here and last is you know hire smart right i mean you cannot be the smartest person in the room you have to be the most dependable person in the room i mean now if let's say we have five departments a four of them are led by people who have at least 13 14 years of experience i really value the experience they bring on the table i have stepped out essentially from a lot of roles you know where we are not uh, i am not able to add enough value in terms of knowledge and experience i can give them direction of course i am attached to the business but the thing is that if you hire right then of course it works out really well and the last and most important is always remember your why right my why was let's say creating jobs so you know when the going gets tough and your back is against the wall you know all of us saw two years of covid probably remembering your why makes you come back a little bit stronger right uh that's it from my side so that's me about me my business and my my journey as an entrepreneur i'd be more than happy to take any questions from anybody who may have that you can leave it in the chat you can ask you can unmute and ask also thank you so much sir I would uh, request any participants to question if they have any question they can ask. Sure, sure. Yes, I have a question. Yes, sir. Please, sir. How it is it tough to find the investor in your idea? Find investor. Sir, uh, see, I'll, I'll tell you the interesting part to that, right? So I never raised money. I think what see what happens is that in a B two B business, once like for example, we sell services to companies. The list of names you saw, they have enough money. So the only thing for us was to you know go and make that sale and then sort of set up the team that can manage that business. So we never raise money. We've been profitable from the first year, but uh, right now like we are two hundred and ten people. First year we were about ten people. right so that is how you have to sort of gradually grow so probably if you would have raised money we could have i, I assume we could have uh, grown faster but not having an investor at least gave us a lot of peace of mind especially during covid from the experiences i have heard from you know other other founder friends so but i don't think finding an investor is very hard i think if the idea has merit now the interesting bit is sir that after a funding winter that you know we are hearing about a lot of investors have reached reached out regarding you know investment in companies like us you know which are sort of profitable and making some cash flows but i don't think it's very hard uh, but yeah i think you have to pick your investors very wisely is what i would say but maybe other entrepreneurs who raise money can comment on that better thank you sir for your question i'll take one more question uh, abhilasha how do you decide to go for an mba and switch fields from engineering yeah abhilasha i was not a great engineer yeah I was, i'll be very honest about it like you know when i was in my third year i realized that uh, you know not not something that i'll be very very good at mba uh, it was also sort of a bhed chal i think you know every all of my friends were preparing for cat i also started preparing for cat i wrote the gmat also in fact i got a 710 so i first wrote the gmat in third year summer and then for one year i prepared for cat and wrote the cat in next november so you can imagine how much time i had given over weekends to sort of you know prepare for that so uh, but i feel that uh, honestly now looking back i feel technology is a great field to build build a career in i think not in terms of just uh, salaries and careers also but i feel that they give you a huge edge in terms of analytical thinking so i would recommend if you're interested in tech then learn tech as long as possible and then mba could be could come much later in life uh, but it was something that i i quite enjoyed 
Uh, okay, Anirudha, I think we'll take two, three questions and I'll wrap up, right? Uh, what was the turning point in your life? I think it was the day I got fired, yeah. I got fired on 8th December and I got fired on the day that I got fired on the day that I got fired on the day that I so typically, kya hota hai ki na, I don't know kitne logon ne yahan naukri kariye, but thoda build up rehta hai. You know, they call you, they tell you things are not going okay. You may want to look out, etc., etc. So I was just shocked. So then that was the turning point. So uske baad, mera best friend hai JP se, Varun Kapoor, my classmate. Thankfully, uski shadi thi 9th, 10th, 11th December. So main wahan chala gaya Bareilly, phone off karke, wapis aaya, and then I bought a laptop. I didn't have a laptop because companies laptop deti hai. And then I started sitting at Chayo's uh, Nehru place. So that 20 days at Chayo changed my life here. I was applying for jobs. I was reading a book called The Shoe Dog, which is the story of the Nike founder. And that I decided, ki, boss, this is the time here. If I, worst case, I'll go back to a job in two years. But let me let me live out my dream of creating 100 jobs. So I don't think you need to get fired to start up. But I feel that, uh, you know, sometimes these triggers help you, uh, you know, get, get there. Uh, which made you go in the other, I think I've already answered that question and that's it. Okay, perfect. So I think I have answered all the questions that I was asked. Uh, uh, thank you so much for the time. Any last question, anyone who wants to unmute and ask and then we can move ahead. Nothing. Okay, great. Back back to you, uh, Sadish sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your enhanced talk and sharing your experiences. It was great pleasure sure. for us to listening to you. Thank you so much. Sure, thank you so much. So nice of you. Thank you. Thanks. Now moving on, uh, I would like to... Should I continue the session? Yeah, yeah, carry on. Carry on. Now, now, now moving on, I would like to uh, invite Mr. Tapan Dekshit to share his experiences and story. Sir, you are not audible. My bad. Still learning to work in the pandemic era, I believe. Uh, thank you, Sampikta, and thanks, Satisha, for setting this up. Uh, I can see Shamim says also there. So, hello, sir. Can't see you, but <laughs> anyways. Uh, so, you know, uh, I just uh, spoke about, you know, uh, being there in the FMT sector. So, both of us were there in Godrej together for a brief period of time. That's the overlap. And it was actually quite some time later that we realized, you know, we both are from JP, right, Aditya? Not sure he's there. Anyways, uh, so yeah, uh, so my my life journey, you know, in a way, in terms of the, uh, you know, the education background is very similar to Aditya. And uh, thankfully, the material that I have for you is now not very similar to what Aditya has shown. Aditya has kind of taken us through a typical life journey of a successful entrepreneur, right? I I like to talk more about life lessons. Uh, because you know you don't just kind of uh, become an entrepreneur overnight, right? It's a process, and somewhere uh, your upbringing, the situations, the circumstances, everything kind of come together and contribute, you know, to you kind of becoming an entrepreneur. Be it as a startup that you maybe started in college, incubated in college, and then continued to kind of uh, you know do it, live with it. Or maybe later on, kind of quitting your job and doing it, right? So, but there are some elements, some seeds which are implanted when you are growing up. It may be the thought process, the upbringing. You have exposure to entrepreneurship. Like in my case, my uncle was an entrepreneur always, right? So I used to always look up to him, so on and so forth, right? So I'll try to keep it brief, uh, uh, and thankfully there'll not be an overlap with what Aditya has shown us already. So I'll just share my screen. Take your time, Tapan. You yes. have uh, ample time. Okay. okay. Uh, you can see my screen? Uh, no, not right. No, sir. It is not visible. Yeah. It's come up now. Yeah. You can see now? Yes, yes sir. Yeah. How it is it visible? Yes, sir. Oh, good. It is visible. Okay, there's something wrong with my keyboard, so bear with me. Okay, so I, I'll go one by one. Some of the lessons that I felt have kind of helped me in my journey, right? And uh, I'll, I'll try to quote some anecdotes or examples uh, from my life to kind of support that. The first one, I, which I believe is very important, is try not to follow the herd. I, I, I kind of added try not to at the end 
because it's actually tough, right? And I'll try and give examples. So go going back to my life in JP, uh, you know, uh, so at least during our times, there was not a mandate that once you get placed in one company, uh, you know, you, you shouldn't sit in other companies. Some companies came to the campus saying that we will come to the campus only if you allow the entire batch to sit because they want even the best candidates to be sitting in that process, right? So uh, luckily in my case, uh, I got placed in the first company. So I started my career with Infosys. And at that time, JSS used to come, come to the campus. I'm not sure it still happens because it was alternate. One year, JSS came to our campus and other year, JIT people went to their campus, right? Uh, so that, this was the year when uh, JSS came to the campus. And, and sorry, before I forget, I'm a 2006 pass out. This is the second batch ever of JP, right? So yeah, I'm that old. I've got two kids. And uh, I, I did my engineering, electronics, and communication, and post that worked with Infosys for about two, two and a half years, and did my MBA from Nasi Munji. Uh, passed out from Nasi Munji in 2010, and from there on, I worked in telecom and FMCG. Started with Idea Cellular, then worked with Pepsi Beverages, and then with Godet Consumer. Post that, started my journey as an entrepreneur. Right. So that's a quick summary about uh, my personal and you know professional life as well as my education background. So coming back to this point. So I got placed with Infosys, right? Now, post that, uh, obviously, the placement process continued for another nine months because I got placed in the starting of the fourth year itself, right? N another nine, ten months of placement process was left. But I took a conscious call of not to sit in other companies, right? Because I had this thought in my mind that why should I take up someone else's seat? Now, that's a very personal, uh, you know, thought process. But if you're able to do that, right, it kind of tells you yourself that, okay, fine, I can go against the hurt and I, I will not succumb to the pressure of, you know, maybe finding a better company. I decided something for myself and for my peers. I will not take one of their seats because if you get placed in two companies, you're basically taking up one more seat, right, which otherwise someone else could have got that. And I stuck to that. Though there were many people in my batch who kind of still continue to sit in the placement process. There are people by the end of it uh who were kind of sorry just give me a sec yeah so there, there were people who were kind of uh you know uh had three uh, offers by the end of the year right so i kind of ensured i'll not do that it's a very tough thing to do and you need to stay true for yours so there were also people who maybe kind of stuck to it for two months but then they succumbed to well, you know, I need to sit in this process because Accenture is here or before because Wipro is here, right? So that's the first lesson. And this is a question which you need to ask yourself. And that's very interesting philosophy, right? Right now, say you're hearing this for the first time, maybe you have this thought process in your mind. After this session, you might be, think, might be thinking about it. But trust me, the true test comes when you're actually in that situation. So you might tell yourself right now, okay, fine, I'll do something similar to what, say, Tapan had done. But when the actual situation comes, then also is when your true test happens. And many people have seen who claim that they will not sit in other companies' placement process, but kind of decide against that. And, you know, I actually seen people, other people who are friends, they kind of stop talking to the person because they're like, okay, fine, this was not someone who said he'll not sit, but now he's sitting. So are you true to yourself is something which you need to kind of ask, right? The second and most important, of course, is believe in yourself right and trust me life will throw many obstacles at you right small big but it's it's those obstacles which kind of make you right make you as a person uh, kind of firm up your thought process and at every point it's always important to believe in yourself have a good self confidence it's again easier said than done and, and you know one point which kind of i mentioned over here is don't succumb to the feeling of insecurity Again, I'll just give an example. Uh, this time, I'll just kind of refer to my you know, MBA experience, right? So uh, I, I kind of did my majors in marketing, right? There were many people who along with me did majors in marketing, and they were always the mindset, you know, I want to do a product role. I want to do a marketing role when the companies start coming to the patient process, right? So just like in uh, engineering, the companies like Infosys, TCS, and Accenture are called the bus, bus in the sense they hire in bulk. You have companies again like ICCI Bank, Infosys, Accenture, TCS, and the likes who are again the bus in MBA colleges because they also hire in bulk. Right. Now you have people in these one and a half years, I say one and a half years because the patient process can start a little early. 
who say that I, you know we will only sit for companies that we want to and they make this list of companies from the list that is going to come in the campus and they are like we are sit only in these companies but again the true test happens when are actually in that situation in that environment and we saw many people not follow that trend especially in the year that you know i was graduating from this was the year when the subprime crisis happened and uh, you know many companies uh, went went down overnight right and then there was this huge talk of recession and this the impact was seen even on placement process so the situation of far more drastic than people could imagine and even then i kind of told to myself i will not sit in process even though i was an ex infosion right so as to say it's a very very tough thing to do again it's a test of character someone who stays true to their word someone who was saying x for 18 months and then did y for the next you know 2 3 months right and you know at the end of it i was also rewarded because i had i sat in like a icici bank or a you know maybe a infosys which actually was not my dream company or dream profile i wouldn't have gotten into telecom right which kind of helped me ultimately get into fmcg And and the, and you know the most important part is not to succumb to the feeling of insecurity. Insecurity. You'll get this you know sinking feeling. It could be because you know you got bad marks. Right. I'm trying to relate to uh, when when I was in engineering. Again, like uh, you know like Aditya mentioned. Right. Even I'm not a uh, you know a great pointer or something. I think so. My CGP was six point eight, and uh, I was too much into gaming. In uh, in Aditya mentioned about you know the experience of uh, uh being uh, kind of uh, given the pink slip in a company in my case i was thrown of thrown from the hostel <laughs> so i had to plan and i went and stayed in shipra right so i anticipated that's going to happen due to xyz events but you know uh it's it's very important you know that, that there will be in, uh, instances there will be circumstances where your confidence is questioned where you feel so bad maybe you don't want to even face your friends right? you don't want to talk to anyone that is where your inner strength kind of comes out right and that is what builds your character at that moment of time you need to tell yourself that listen hey i can survive this this is nothing and always think that is this something which is very important in in a scheme of like 5 10 years right and that will help you answer that question so try your best not to succumb to that feeling of fear to the feeling of insecurity right and reach out to people talk to others right don't don't go into that well so that that's one lesson which i would like to mention and you know again kind of moving ahead in my journey right i i uh work i have a corporate experience of about 6 years started my first company back in 2016 uh, this was called tailspin.ai it was into uh fashion ai and retailing there are few customers who are still using the product in their stores right and uh in in uh, uh you know uh aditya's case the the primary goal of becoming an entrepreneur was uh that he wanted to create jobs in my case it's a little different i actually was not very happy with the corporate job right and that's the reason i was always looking out for opportunities to start on my own and luckily in my case my younger brother was always had always been an entrepreneur and he used to always come up to me with some great ideas and there was one time it was really really in a bad uh, place uh, in my corporate job because of xyz reasons and that is when my brother came up to me uh, with the idea which kind of appealed to me and this and then i decided you know it's either now or never because you know i was already maybe nearing 30 32 and uh, you know the the older you get the difficult it becomes to start on your own because you get added uh, family responsibilities maybe emis are there to pay off your home loan car loans etc right so i i thought to myself this is the time that i need to kind of uh, step back and you know do something on my own of course i had kind of the support of my younger brother also who's kind of done that so i didn't need to kind of you know go through the process of setting up my own company and all but a, again never uh, you know easier said than done so in my case the the the, the trigger rather you know not let's just say the motivation motivation of course is to have something of my own but the trigger was that i was not happy in my corporate uh, profile you know and it was not just you know the the last job uh, in the previous jobs also there was one time when i got promoted and i was not happy right and that kind of told myself that it's time that i need to kind of step back you know do something of my own and when when you start when you start having that thought process right so it's better to channelize that rather than to kind of suppress it right and how do you channelize that one way is to you know kind of explore uh working with startups right so many times uh you have this thought in your mind okay i need to do something of your own but you don't have the courage to do that right 
So one way to do it is kind of working with startups, get to see that environment and make sense for yourself. Does this work for, you, work for me or not? Right. And you kind of do that hustle, right? Which is very different from what you kind of experience in a corporate job. That is when you realize and maybe that question you have in your mind that is this something for me gets answered. So that's one way of kind of understanding whether this is something for you or not, right? And if you don't want to do that, if you want to take the plunge, please always do your own research first. This means that if you're in a job, right, maybe spend some time post your working hours. Now, nowadays, you know, you got the benefit of uh, remote working, right? So you have time, maybe you just sign off a little early in the meeting and try to spend some time on doing research on the ideas that you have in your mind, right? Of course, you need a problem statement. Without a problem statement, there is no startup, right? So understand whether the problem statement makes sense. Most importantly, is that something you want to solve for? And do you think you can solve that for another 20 years? Right. So write down these questions and try to answer them. That is, do I have a problem statement? Is this something which I want to do for next 20 years? Right. From that time frame, if you're able to answer, then maybe try to look out for a co-founder. Right. And and uh, I mean, I can't overemphasize how important it is to have a like-minded person, right? Some people are lucky to kind of get that, but but you can't do a company just on your own. You need to have at least one more person. Best is to have three people, uh, like the, like we have in Mobot.ai. We are three co-founders, but uh, at least you can start with two. So once you have your research going, you you kind of establish the problem statement. You've done some primary research, spoken to few people, validated the idea. You got someone with you then probably think of you know quitting your job and and doing this ne never go unprepared into this journey because if you go unprepared right you're actually spending a lot of time to do the things which you could have anyways done with your job or with, with the side hustle right so utilize that time take out some time from your work and and try to answer these questions right and then set honest goals for yourself okay fine you started the journey now right what next like uh, Aditya mentioned, right, he gave himself maybe two years. So when he was sitting in that co-working space, he thought, okay, fine, let me do this. I'll, I'll give it two years. If things move in the right direction, I'll continue. Else, I'll leave this. So that is also very important. You know, I, I've heard of cases where the people are just dragging on three, four, five, six years and not actually achieving the goals that they probably had set out for themselves, right? And this kind of start impacting you your family and you know if you're married in, in in some cases your partner as well right because the partner also starts questioning you that hey you promised that you would do this for two three years but i don't see that you're successful right uh, what, what what next right so give yourself honest goals and the reason I'm calling it honest goals is you need to kind of measure yourself against them right so your your professional goals and personal goals need not be the same keep that in mind so when you're when you're doing a startup you're so engrossed, you kind of end up mixing both of them, right? You, you you start to look at your personal goals from the lens of professional goals and vice versa. Don't do that. If you're not able to uh, kind of achieve your personal goals after the time you set out for yourself, it's time that you sat down and thought this through, right? Uh, ask, ask tough questions for yourself and then maybe rethink, I don't know, maybe pivot is an answer, pivot is not an answer, maybe just look at, you know, kind of moving on to a new phase of your life, right? That doesn't necessarily mean you kind of kill the kida that you have in, in your entrepreneur. That means that take a pause, maybe do a job, maybe in a startup or a corporate role, right? And in that time process, again, think through that, okay, fine, what do I need to do again? What went wrong? So on and so forth. So very important that you kind of set goals for yourself and are staying honest and measure your success or the lack of it, you know, against that, right? And uh, with that, I'd like to conclude, right? Just want to keep it short. Uh, trying to emphasize some of the primary things which kind of lead you to being an entrepreneur and once an entrepreneur what to do and what not to do right and uh, i'll just leave you guys with a photograph of uh, a team outing we had so we know about 60 people in the company uh we're backed by sequoia we raised from them uh, i think so last to last year right we're looking to raise another round and uh you know, uh, in, in case of Aditya, he was completely bootstrapped and that's very, very difficult. Again, kudos to him. In our case, uh, the kind of business that we are in, we, we kind of uh, we kind of help uh, businesses get more out of their CCTV cameras by running video intelligence. We kind of needed that fund to kind of uh, expand, uh, grow our team, 
uh, we have presence now in United States, right? Where we have we have hired people over there, and that's the reason we had to look look for funds. And that again is uh, a question which you need to answer whether you want to do bootstrap your journey or you want to take funds in the starting or maybe later on, right? Whatever works for you. In many cases, especially in case of B two C business, funds are very important, right? Because there is a substantial burn which happens every month, right? Uh, so with that, I like to conclude. Uh, and uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, please please feel free to ask. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful talk. It was really motivating and informative for students who are looking forward to become a successful entrepreneur. Thank you so much. I request the participant to post their questions in the chat box. Uh, Tapan, I was wondering if you could answer. When you start working with some startups, is it necessary to give up the corporate jobs? Uh, you're saying working with startup full time? Yeah. Someone uh, is going to start. Uh -huh. like, it's just in the beginning state. Is okay. It, uh, yeah. no, so th that's what I try to mention. You know, if you're in a job and you know there could be multiple reasons you're thinking to start up. So it's not necessary you quit your job. What I'm trying to say is you need to prepare and understand and figure out whether the idea that you have is right or not. And you're trying to find a co-founder. And uh, you can start your company, but uh, you can't do both. Uh, in the longer term, right? You have to be full time and pursuing the idea very seriously if you want to make something of it. You can't do both a job as well as your own startup. You can have some overlap, maybe two months period, three months period, but you have to kind of quit your job to do this seriously because otherwise it's not worth it. You, you'll not be true to yourself, you'll not be true to your job, you'll not be true to your uh, startup journey. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone have any question? So there is a question in chat box, I guess. Yeah, please ask. So there is a question that how far did CGPA matters? During your graduation, how much you focus on the marks or CGPA? By not, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> I mean, you, you have exam two examples in front of you, right? Uh, you got yeah. Aditya and you got me, right? It just doesn't matter, but all said and done doesn't mean that you just kind of spend your time whiling away, playing games and stuff. Right. Uh, so, you know, you need to understand what you want to do in life. If you want to go for further studies like MS, right, then you have to get good grades. It, it, that goes without saying. Right. But uh, if you want to do MBA, then maybe that kind of gives you a scope of not having great grades. And when I say great grades, like anything north of eight is kind of, I would say, great grades. But uh, otherwise, you know, it's not something which you kind of need to pursue in your four years right? and, and this is one very important point I want to mention you know that the four years of your life I'm not sure uh, people over here of, of which year right and I, I still kind of feel they are the best four years ever you know please enjoy please enjoy as much I mean give time to studies yes but also please enjoy if you're into sports you know play the hell out of it right I, I still remember I, I, I broke my and I dislocated my shoulder, but I still used to play football because I was so crazy about it, right? If you're so crazy about it, please play it. Pursue your passion, take out time, hang out with your friends, do all things that you love. Because trust me, you know, when you're 30, when you're 35, you get married, you get kid, and then just sit down with your engineering friends, right? You just go back to these times and you feel so nostalgic. I mean, I can't explain it to you, but Right now, you're just living the life. You, you're running from maybe one lecture to the other. Studies are important, right? I'm, I'm not saying not important, but don't be mad about getting grades, right? Uh, there are people who have not done really well academically, right? And then have gone to do wonders in their professional life or personal life, right? So that's my answer. Uh, our next speaker has arrived. Mr. Rajesh Tandra. Welcome, you, sir. No, sir. We'll take just two minutes. A few questions are there to our speaker, Mr. Tapadakshu. Sure, sure, sure. Yes. Good morning. So there is another question uh, by Aryan Gandhi. Uh, sir, I have doubt that if you want to start a tech company, so is we have to first focus on our tech skills or else go and find out tech person to start as soon as possible? Uh, see, you know, it's important that if you're doing a tech company, maybe have a co-founder. If you're not the, if you're not the tech person, a co-founder who 
you think can be your CTO or you know now there's a college CPTO as in both product and tech, right? Because uh, if you're starting out, right, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to find people who would want to work with you just in return of equity, right? Because nowadays techies are in demand. They are the salaries have gone through the roof, right? For someone to start working with an early stage startup. Either you pay them a lot or somehow you kind of are a very good orator or you've got strong communication or convincing skills and you just give them some equity and they're convinced with that, which actually doesn't happen. So my suggestion is look look for a tech co-founder if you're not a tech person yourself. And uh, if you think that you can kind of build the tech skills, again, not recommended. Nowadays, there's a lot of hype around you know the, the no code base and doing things on no code. I'm not a very big fan of that. You, I mean, obviously need to code and need to kind of build out that entire tech stack. So better to have a co-founder who comes with the tech background and who you think can be your CTO down the line. Thank you, sir. So there is one last question. During the money burning phase, that's the early phase of B2C company bootstrapping, is good or raising funds is better? Which one has the upper hand here? By Amal Tripathi. B2C is all about month on month growth, then you need to raise funds. Uh, I'm not sure how much funds you can get from family and friends. So bootstrapping for a B2C company which where there's a lot of burn and like an e-commerce company, right? You have to spend on marketing and again, things have become very expensive. Inflation is very high. Even, even getting, so there's this phrase called CAC, C-A-C, customer acquisition cost. So customer acquisition cost has now become very high, right? The reason is because the space has become very competitive. So there are so many D2C brands, like right? direct to consumer brands, even, even like Godrej's consumer, for example, are now trying to sell hit good night and all these products directly to consumer. So what, what that has resulted in is the cat going up. So we have more people, more companies trying to sell their products directly to consumers like you or me. All right. And that has resulted in, you know, the cost of running ads and everything getting relevant results at the right place in that search it's all become very expensive so the burn has gone up so if you're planning to do a b2c you would need uh, funds at the start thank you so much sir for your talk and answering all the questions uh, thank you i'll, I'll, thank I'll you. just put my email id over here if anyone else has any queries please feel free to reach out i'll be more than happy to help out uh, yeah and all the best, guys, for your studies and for your entrepreneurship journey. Thank you, Tapan. Thanks, Aditya. And thank you, Ria, for your wonderful uh, talks. And this session was very much interesting. Let's over to Samprit. Now I would like to introduce our next speaker, Professor Rajesh Tandon, with great respect. He went to IIT Kanpur to study electronics engineer. He completed his post-graduation in management from IIM Calcutta. He received his PhD from Case Western Reserve University, Cleveland, United States. Dr. Rajesh Tandon is an internationally acclaimed uh, leader and practitioner of participatory research and development. He focused Society for Participatory Research in Asia, a voluntary organization uh, providing support to gra uh, grassroots initiatives in South Asia and continues to be chief functionary since 1982. He was appointed co-chair of a prestigious UNESCO chair on community-based research and social responsibility in higher education for two terms. The UNESCO chair grows out of the, and support UNESCO Global Lead to play a key role in assisting countries to build knowledge society. Dr. Tandon has authored more than 100 articles, a dozen books, and numerous training manuals. He has received many awards and now. Without any wait, I would like to invite Professor Rajesh Tandon to give a talk on entrepreneurship for sustainable livelihood. Good morning and namaskar. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you all for inviting me. First of all, wish you all an exciting World Entrepreneurship Day. I was uh, <clears throat> trying to understand the origins of this day not the origin of entrepreneurship, which goes back centuries, but the day. <clears throat> and I couldn't find the starting point. I did come across the beginning of American National Entrepreneurship Day, 
which is not August 21, it's November 15. And that began 12 years ago. And somewhere after that, this World Entrepreneurship Day began. And it's good that you start uh, thinking about entrepreneurship on a day uh, and that we begin to examine what does entrepreneurship mean in 2022. First of all, um, entrepreneurship is what? What is entrepreneurship? Is it uh, the French? The French uh, entrepreneur basically said to undertake, meant to undertake. And you know, there is another English word called enterprise, which is close to entrepreneur. But essential characteristics of entrepreneurship are commitment to a cause and capacity to take risk. Entrepreneurship is different from doing a good job. Nowadays, of course, just as Tapan Dixit was explaining, we tend to think of entrepreneurship in the language of unicorns and IT and TT. Not that that is not important. It is important, but that is a minor manifestation a minor subset of entrepreneurship in today's world. Why I say minor? I want each of you to make a list of entrepreneurs in your family and among your close group of friends and their families. You will find at least one person who left the comfort and security of a job or family business and went out and tried his or her hand on something new, took the risk. Chances are they may succeed. But when you take risk, there is also possibility of failure. And that's why these days they say that all startups should be ready to suffer 60%, 70% failure rate. The ones which become unicorn are only one out of 20. The remaining 19 have failed. You will find that there are entrepreneurs in your family who started a new business, who moved to another city or location and started a new school, a university. Would you call me, Rajesh Tendon, an entrepreneur? I had a cushion job at IIM Calcutta, lifetime. And at that time, I would have retired as half a dozen directorships in different uh, IIMs, as well as Harvard Business School, etc., etc., and corporate board. But I decided to take the risk. And is Priya a successful enterprise today? What are the criteria? Is Rajesh Tandon a billionaire? No. So let's, let's clear the cobweb. Let's not equate entrepreneurship with unicorns or only technology-based enterprises. Human civilization has made advancement because of successive successful entrepreneurs in our country and elsewhere. Those who started how to make Amla hair oil. Hmm? Would you call them entrepreneur? Those who used mango in Ratnagiri 
in the peak mango season and bottled amras will you consider them entrepreneur those who developed a new technology in agriculture so that the seeds of rice are compatible with the local climate local land conditions would they be considered entrepreneurs yes all definitions of entrepreneurship will talk about innovation but is innovation only a phenomena of modern generation hmm? think of innovations which have led us to the state of health and well being we are today think of innovation of a bicycle i am not bothered about tesla i am looking at bicycle think of the innovation around use of water harvesting mechanism in desert regions of rajasthan and sub sahara and sahara were those water bodies as designed appropriately for that period of time not an innovation were those who managed those water bodies and made a living out of it were not entrepreneurs they may not have become billionaires but who cared who cared i think it is important therefore for all of you to separate the meaning of entrepreneurship from the contemporary craze about becoming a unicorn you start a media enterprise you start a youtube youtube influencers are entrepreneurs and i know several of them personally young ones because we do a program on youth engagement and come across, i've come across four or five young ones who left a corporate job and took the risk took the risk to become an entrepreneur and they are passionate about what they are doing they may not be making millions but they are surviving they are able to put food on their table and look after their health so on this uh, day let's start thinking about entrepreneurship more holistically and more broadly otherwise we will end up chasing a mirage of success called unicorns you can all try to become entrepreneurs if you have a passion for a cause something you want to do you have found a niche in the market you have found a passion in your heart something i call it keeda 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 khopri ka keeda jiske dimag mein keeda hai wo essential prerequisite hai entrepreneurship ke liye aur dusra usme asafalta ke liye dam hona chahiye jo unicorn bane hain unki success aaj dikhti hai par jab unki pitai ho rahi thi jab unko asafal ho rahe the wo kahani hum nahi sun pate but ability to take risk capacity to take risk is the essential second feature of becoming an entrepreneur so i want to leave that thought with you then come to the question of sustainable livelihood and what is this sustainable business and why this phrase is being used repeatedly all of you know this i don't have to tell you but there is a there is a program 
uh, on Al Jazeera channel. If you have not seen, I'll encourage you to see. Uh, I've been watching for the last two days, uh, Friday and Saturday. It's it's called SOS Planet. When it comes in the night, it basically gives you current news about what is happening to environmental. And last night's program, I the program is half an hour. I couldn't I couldn't sit through the program for about half an hour. After 15, 20 minutes, I switched off. Why? Because from Brazil to America to Canada to five, six countries of Europe to Africa to Asia to China, wildfires and flooding. Each country has both phenomena simultaneously. And that is also happening in our subcontinent. So a future livelihood, entrepreneurship for future livelihood should be concerned about its impact on already considerably deteriorated ecological climate conditions. In management schools these days, I am told they teach ESG, economics, social, and governance. You have to be ESG compliant. The ecological component needs to be reiterated. When you only think about becoming a successful entrepreneur, you do not examine the impact of your entrepreneurship success on the ecological system around you. The challenge for coming period is to produce innovations, take risk in developing sustainable solutions which are ecologically harmonious to the planet Earth as it is today. Water will be, a lot of people say water will be the next focus of wars. I saw yesterday in that program that Yangtze River is like a small Nala in Delhi, the famous Yangtze River in China. Every day there are landslides on Himalayas. So the question is that is a solution that provides tourism, a tech platform that provides access to tourism in remote Himalayan region, since many of our young people and uh, middle class couldn't travel abroad this year. They all went to, I am told, I am reading, they all went to exotic Himalayan sites, you know, from Western Himalayas to Eastern Himalayas, the Northeast. But did those platforms consider the ecological impact of increased tourism on those habitations, on those fragile ecosystems, or not? or not. Increasingly, we are experiencing this challenge and the entrepreneurship requires attention. It requires widespread entrepreneurship because standard pre-existing models and prototypes and products and services do not work anymore, do not work anymore. We have to come to terms with, therefore, those principles which sustainable experts, sustainability experts, UN system and others, have described. 
Let me repeat three of them for you. Does your innovation, does your entrepreneurship reduce carbon consumption? Reduce, first principle. Does your entrepreneurship contribute to reuse? The second principle, reuse. It is only the pandemic, two years of pandemic forced us to both reduce and reuse. We were recycling many things. Reuse, re reduce, reuse, and recycle. And nowadays, there's a lot of discussion on circular economy and all these things. But the principle is recycle. Now, recycle means capacity to produce products and services which draw on the so-called waste of other products and services. So the attention is on what is left behind, not on what is forthcoming. The site we put on entrepreneurship, if we want it to support sustainable livelihoods, then it must confront the question of ecological sustainability for a population, not just 1.4 billion Indians, but 8 billion globally. Because you, as, as you have witnessed uh, a heat wave coming from the Arabian desert makes us sweat. We can't erect boundaries to prevent heat waves, cold waves, monsoon waves, cyclonic waves. No boundaries can prevent them. So solutions and innovations which are ecologically sustainable require attention to the principles of Reduce, reuse, and recycle. And if I may add a technological jargon, because I know many of you are IT experts, I'm a sort of an old uh, uh, IT fellow. Um, reduce, reuse, recycle, and reboot. Reboot. Boot it again. What do we do in rebooting? We think about changing in the system specs, system specifications. Our current understanding of system specifications is not consistent with ecological realities. We are using products and services and the design framework or design uh, blueprint, which was designed, which was prepared generations below, before, where concerns for ecological sustainability were not so paramount. So as young professionals, all of you, whether you are an expert in technology or not, all of you need to think about Adapting technology in your entrepreneurship spirit, but focusing on those solutions which are sustainable in future. And there are many discussions about what makes livelihood sustainable. In the last uh, two and a half years of the pandemic, we learned how to survive reasonably happily with very limited resources. And that, the principle of reuse, reduce, and recycle was practiced in every household in the world during the pandemic. 
But once we are back, now we're thinking back in the old framework of trying to create unicorns whose uh, success criteria is uh, whether their stock market value is high or not, whether they contribute to the growth of GDP or not. I think time has come. Many economists, if you are reading, if you are economists, if you are reading economists, many economists are beginning post-pandemic to write our own Indian economists, international economists, write about there is an emerging consensus that chasing GDP growth mindlessly will result in rapid decline of civilization. Even the famous McKinsey, the darling of all the corporate houses, McKinsey report, you can Google and see McKinsey report, it says that what was likely to happen in 2070 is going to happen now in 2040. If corporate behavior does not change, if investor behavior does not change, if academic teaching does not change, if entrepreneurship does not change, if policy making does not change, then the end, my friends, is not 50 years ago away, it's 20 years. And seeds of that are happening. So it's a, it's a choice that we must exercise. And you have a future ahead of you. You have expertise more than ever before any one of us had. But I was listening to Mr. Tapan Dikshit and his answers to some of your queries. Don't bother about expertise. You want to be an entrepreneur? Have a passion and a stomach to take risk. Leave the comfort zone, run away from your house, leave your job, take risk for your passion. You're passionate about universal health care, you're passionate about universal education, you're passionate about saving water, you're passionate about saving wildlife, doesn't matter what you're passionate about. Making money is incidental to your passion for an entrepreneur. To go back to the history of entrepreneurship, even the icons who are now regularly being taught in management schools, their starting period was defying their comfort zone, taking the risk for a passion that they had. A passion may have been to produce uh, electricity, to produce coal, to build steel, to shipyard, that's also part of the passion. So think about sustainability, focus on your passion, and take risk. Happy entrepreneurship. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful talk. Thank you for clearing the term entrepreneurship first. And then uh, you stressed on the need of uh, strength of bearing the stress of being unsuccessful. And uh, your concern for environment uh, and uh, sustainable li livelihood was reflected from your talk. We are sure that uh, sustainable experts will focus on their work on reducing carbon emission. Then you talk about uh, rebooting. Apart from reduce, reuse and recycle, rebooting is also required. So it was a very well received uh, talk. And do we have any questions from the audience? Please uh, free to ask. Do we have any questions from the audience? Thank you so much, sir. We are honored to have you here. Uh, I request participants to post their questions in the chat box. Uh, sir, Namaskar, sir. Uh, uh, sir, my name is Amit Kaur Gupta, sir. 
सर एक ये क्वेश्चन था कि जैसे हम सोशल लाइफ में काम करते हैं तो यहाँ पे मतलब हम किस फील्ड में जाके काम कर सकते हैं जैसे सर जब हम एम टेक या बी कर रहे थे तो उस समय हमारे टीचर कुछ एन में ले जाके हमें काम कराते थे कि आप यहाँ पे एजुकेशन दे सकते हैं कपड़ा डोनेट कर सकते हैं पेड़ लगा सकते हैं पानी कर सकते हैं लेकिन सर जैसे हम लोग जॉब में आ जाते हैं तो कुछ कॉर्पोरेट सेक्टर्स होते हैं हम उनके साथ सी एस में जुड़ जाते हैं लेकिन अगर सर इस टाइप का हमें कुछ इंटरप्रेस स्टार्ट करना हो कि जहाँ पे हम सोशल लाइफ के लिए काम कर सकते हैं कि इस समय हमारे पास थोड़ा बहुत समय भी होता है मनी भी होती है कि हम किसी के ऊपर आश्रित नहीं रह सकते फिर अपना कुछ हम लोग मिल ग्रुप में ज्वाइन करके लोगों के लिए कुछ कर इसमें हम सर कैसे काम करना चाहें सर इस फील्ड के बारे में देखिए काम तो कभी भी आप कर सकते हैं और ये बहुत अच्छा इरादा है कि आप समाज के लिए कुछ काम करें पर थोड़ा अंतरप्रनोरशिप का अर्थ ये देखिए थोड़ा सा आप ये सोचिए कि आपको किस कौन सा पैशन है क्या चीज आपके आपको अपन सड़क पे घूमते हैं ये लगते हैं मेरे दिमाग में आजकल एक चल रहा है मैं बचपन में जब छोटा था मैं आपको एग्जाम्पल दे रहा हूँ मेरे दिमाग में क्या कीड़ा चल रहा है करेंटली वो वो ये कीड़ा चल रहा है कि आ, मैं जब छोटा था हमारी ग्रैंड मदर हमें कहती थी कि संभाल के चलो ये मैन होल जो है खुल जाएंगे और तुम गर, अंदर घुस जाओगे ये ये हमको वो सिखाती थी मैं दिल्ली में अभी ये देख रहा हूं कि अभी भी मैन होल में लोग घुस रहे हैं अब यार ये मतलब कैसे ये प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व हो चक्कर क्या है मतलब मैन होल में क्यों लोग सत्तर साल बाद भी घुस रहे तो एक समस्या आपको दिखाई देगी एक एक नीड दिखाई देगी सोसाइटी में आपने जैसे कहा कि शिक्षा का, का काम कर सकते हैं आप आप सोचिए उसके लिए कोई बहुत बड़ा आयोजन से शुरुआत नहीं होती शुरुआत हमेशा छोटी सी होती है हमेशा छोटी सी होती है आप उस छोटी सी शुरुआत से सोचिए आपके साथ एक दो और साथी है जो जुड़ना चाहते हैं वो कहते हैं भाई हम कुछ करना चाहते हैं शिक्षा के क्षेत्र में ऐसे ऐसे कुछ कर सकते हैं उसको आप कैसे करिए तो कीड़ा खोजिए पहले पैशन खोजिए तरीका अपने आप निकल जाएगा आपकी जो एक्सपर्टीज है टेक्नोलॉजी वगैरह की उसको आप यूज करिए कि भाई हम कैसे रीच कर सकते हैं जैसे बहुत सारे लोग ऐप बनाते हैं गवर्नमेंट भी बहुत सारे ऐप बनाती है आजकल पर सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट काम इस समय यह है ऐप को इस्तेमाल करने की तरीका आना मतलब आप दूसरों की बात कर रहे हैं मैं पढ़ा लिखा आदमी हूँ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इंजीनियर हूँ पचास साल पुराना और मैं इसमें जो जितने सारे ऐप्स हैं आधे यूज नहीं कर पाता हूँ तो वो जो हाई स्कूल फेल है वो लड़का क्या करेगा आपने ऐप ऐप बना दिए अब आप सोचिए कितना बड़ा स्कोप है अंतरप्रनोरशिप का हाउ टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड यूज एप्स अब कैसे करेंगे यह सोचना पड़ेगा तो इसमें इसमें कोई बहुत प्रोसीजर या उसकी जरूरत नहीं होती आप शुरुआत कर दीजिए ट्राई करिए आप अपने नेबरहुड में ही जहां हैं पर अपने कीड़े से शुरू करिए कि भाई मुझे ये पैशन है मुझे ये इस एरिया में कुछ परिवर्तन लाना है तो वो वो ही एक तरीका है सर एक क्वेश्चन और एक मेरे कुलीग्स ने पूछा था कि वो सर इस समय तेजपुर यूनिवर्सिटी में है असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर हैं सर तो वो इस समय सर क्या कहते हैं मणिपुर मेघालय उन लोगों ने विजिट किया हुआ है पर वहाँ पे वो कुछ करना चाह रहे थे पर उन्हें ऐसा कुछ वहाँ के लोगों के लिए क्योंकि जैसे हिल एरिया है तो काफी टिपिकल होता है किसी को ट्रेवल करना पहुंचना या जैसे सर भी आपने बताया कि हिल एरिया में जैसे कुछ इवेंट होते कि हम लोग कैसे ट्रैक करें टूरिज्म के माध्यम से तो उनसे कभी कोई डिस्कशन होता रहता है तो ऐसे एक दिन डिस्कशन चल रहा है तो सर वहाँ पे वो किस चीज को सर फोकस कर सकते हैं मतलब कि जो जैसे वहाँ का जो रूरल एरिया है या थोड़ा सा और टिपिकल एरिया है कि जहाँ पे हमारे सेवन सिस्टर स्टेट्स है जहाँ पे लोगों को बहुत दिक्कत होती है किसी भी चीज को कम्युनिकेशन पहुंचने में करने के लिए देखिये मैनेजमेंट में एक सिद्धांत पढ़ाया जाता है प्रोफेसर रहा हूँ वो कहते हैं मार्केट रिसर्च है अपन कंज्यूमर बिहेवियर फलाना डिमाका अब भाई वही सिद्धांत आप जाके उन राज्यों में लगाइए लोगों से पूछिए लोगों को ऑब्जर्व करिए क्या परेशानी है टंडन जी दिल्ली में बैठे हुए कैसे बता सकते हैं कि वहां के लिए क्या हो सकता है वो गए घूम के आए बड़ा अच्छा किया उन्होंने वहां के लोगों से बात करें बोले भाई पूछे कौतूहल होता है ना कि अरे यार आपको यहाँ से यहाँ जाने में पांच घंटे लग रहे हैं क्या आपको इसका कुछ उपाय सोचा जा सकता है 
वो कहेंगे अरे हमने ये सोचा था नहीं हुआ ये वो अब इस तरह से आप क्या पानी यू नो रनिंग वाटर रन अवे ऑन ए हिली प्लेस पर उसको स्टोर नहीं कर रहे हैं आप गए वहां देखा आपने अरे इतनी बारिश हो रही पानी बहा जा रहा है इसको कोई रोकने का तरीका लोगों से पूछा आपने नहीं सोचा उनका कोई सोचा था पर हुआ नहीं वहां इनोवेशन आप करी तो मार्केट मार्केट रिसर्च ही है और क्या है सिद्धांत जो लोग चाहते हैं जो उनकी नीड है जो वहां के संदर्भ में वर्केबल सोल्यूशन है वही तो एंटरप्रनोरशिप करेगी जी सर थैंक यू सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर आई एम प्रोफेसर विभा प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशनल इनोवेशन काउंसिल इंस्टीट्यूट and this is really uh, first of all uh, let me just tell you it was very informative talk and um, fortunately or unfortunately i don't know this day is actually falling on sunday otherwise we were planning to have uh, the session in campus only but um, uh, then sunday since you know there are personal family commitments of all these students and faculties as well so we thought to have this session online thank you for joining us today but i think uh, we can have another session satish sir uh, yeah we can have another session for our management students uh, in campus only sir you please accept my invitation today itself then satish sir will coordinate accept please come to the campus yes invitation sir invitation accepted thank you mai thoda sa agle 2 3 hafte travel kar raha hu to 15 september ke baad I like yeah, to so come and interact plan. with students. I, I, that gives yeah, me, because, uh, you know, they ask sir. questions, we puts me on thinking pad. So yes, so sure. yeah, we'll we do that. Yeah, we can have one day complete session where we can uh, have um, you know uh, opportunity to uh, interact with the domain specific like management. We can have half an hour or one hour discussion for for only for the management because then their queries will be different. Their thinking will be slightly different. and then from electronics and computers we can merge and then i think sadish sir we can plan this you coordinate with sir and take some time and then we can move ahead with this thank you sir for joining as it was really very good uh, session sure, yeah uh, that that was the thing i sorry i interfered in between but uh, this was my request so thank you sir thank you thank you so much sir Yes. And thank you so much, sir, for your talk and answering all the questions very perfectly. And we are really honored to have you here today. And this was really a good and informative talk. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. All the best. You, and look forward to meeting you all sometime. Namaskar. Sure. Sure, now sir. moving on. Now moving on in the session, I would like to introduce our next. Now moving on in the session, I would like to. Yes, sir. Uh, can we have a group photograph? Yeah, I would like to participate. I would like to request participant to open their camera for a group photo. Good enough. Can everyone please open their camera? सर अमर जी सर यस सर यस सर 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 का मेल आईडी और कांटेक्ट नंबर शेयर हो सकता है क्या सर जिस एनजीओ से जुड़े हो आई विल शेयर तो प्लीज सर शेयर कर दीजिएगा ग्रुप में आई विल शेयर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू एवरीवन ओवर टू संप्रीता thank you everyone star entrepreneurs riya aditya and tapan also today i i joined late and uh, i am having another meeting parallelly so i'll leave in between uh, yeah, riya aditya and tapan i think you are still connected here so we are eagerly waiting for you on 27th uh, i believe you people are joining us on that particular day yes ma'am 
Yeah, so see you on that day. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, uh, yes, sir, now you can start, please. Okay, now moving on with the session, I would like to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Sumanton. She is working as assistant professor and have more than 16 years of teaching experience with Department of Computer Science and Engineering and Informative Technology, JP Institute of Information Technology, NIDA. She has published more than 40 articles and reputed SCI, Scopus Generals, conferences, books, and chapters. Without any further ado, I would like to invite Ma'am to give an introduction on her sponsored projects. Ma'am, you are not audible. Hi. Am I audible yes. now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you are audible. Audible? Yeah. Yeah. So first, thank you so much. And it's very embarrassing to be introduced in front of all these giants, I should say. Uh, so I'll move on directly to what um, to certain projects that I've been lucky to have. So firstly, let me mm, share the screen. I hope this should work. Yeah, I hope it's visible. Yeah, it is visible. OK, so uh, the first project that I got through was uh, from the TIH, that is by the government of India, Ministry of Science and Technology. So in India, we have currently 25 technology innovation hubs that are the TIH as is commonly known now. It is available as you can see in all the IITs and IISC in, as well as IISER Pune and a few other institutes like the Bits Pilani and others. Okay, so what they did last time uh, was, uh, up till last time was they, um, they had certain uh, projects to be floated and if you're interested in those projects you can apply for them from this time onwards what I found was uh, they had very very constrained group of working and mostly they were asking if students wanted to be a part of that also so here in the students got to work so in this project uh, there were uh, sorry in the CIH there were a total of 496 technological projects the details you can find at the given uh, link. It's taken directly from the DSP site. I would not like to waste your time by going into it, but you can look into it. Now, this is my project, and uh, or rather, I should say, my students' project, done by BTEC students of CSCIT, Ishita Gupta and Janani Pradeep, and it's called Enabling Geriatric Exercises for Senior Population in Remote Areas. So we wanted to create a virtual geriatric assistant for the elderly, especially the ones who were not very well connected with health centers or did not have much access to healthcare professionals. So the, the, the importance came from the fact that uh, geriatric means our elderly population are in very much prone to accidents, to falls, to general health failings, due to which they need rehabilitation, constant uh, looking after as well. So one of the aspects that we wanted to help in this work was allowing for exercise routines in which uh, they could have a virtual assistant to help them out to understand what kind of analytics we could derive from them and how it would generally make their life a little better okay so that they don't have to go to the exact uh, healthcare person specifically the physiotherapist but it would count the system would count how many times they are doing the exercise whether they are doing it correctly is there an improvement in the way they are doing it so that was the aim with which we started the project so we wanted to have a kinematic 
uh, to exhibit um, firstly to understand what kind of kinematics is presented by the elderly people then present a low cost system to monitor them by using biomechanical kinetic act actions okay and we hope that this would come up as an innovative project for correcting certain wrong postures um, and which can also help the health care uh, people or the caretakers of these elderly people so this was our basic formation of how we proceeded with the project the literature survey the experimental setup software development and analysis and validation so geriatric means they were required to exercise and those exercises would be captured through a webcam or through your phone's uh, camera and then features would be extracted certain corrections can be immediately uh, told to the to the, the, the person who is in front of them so that they can be corrected and it does not deteriorate okay and finally it would create also an analytic system so that the others can understand about it so the task is for having an effective monitoring and timely intervention so computational based metric for forming rule set that was the ontology creation part that we went through then for functional correction we had certain metrics that could help into it integration testing and fault tolerance was uh, our uh, mm, act upon which that could help us with the system working on and certain uh, feedback could be given either as an audio or through certain sms messages on the mobile itself these are uh, these were our deliverables so this project that we got was basically a 6 months project or rather i should say a 10 months project as the tih basically gives so in this project uh, students were they had to finish up whatever we are uh, telling up with the deliverables and if it was not possible then they had to give an explanation about why it was not possible we had a mentor handle from the tih bombay also from whom we got this uh, fellowship so it was a fellowship for both the students 10000 per month for the btech students mtech students also could apply under the same heading but in a different category same is for phd students also we have, the tih provides certain fellowship the amounts and their criteria are different and the durations are also much different in those cases so these were our technology uh, readiness levels that is expected when we deliver the work to them our work plan set up that we had to undergo for all of these works and that's about the project that we got through the tih uh further moving on let me just touch upon a few things that we are doing here at um, jiit also so these are from the directorate of research innovation and development in which they uh, sponsor Uh, individual level projects for faculty and students students at all levels of uh, undergraduates as well as post graduates as well as for doctoral levels along with that there is a concept of creation of centers of excellence so currently in all our with uh, or i should say together with all the institutes that we have with jiit like at noida at 128 at guna at waknagar and at anupshar so all of them together within all of these together there were four centers of excellence that was created the first one is the center of excellence on artificial intelligence for education the second on intelligence evaluation and rehabilitation of structures the third on uav and electronic border security and the fourth on biotechnology solutions for soil and water remediations okay i am sure there will be a lot of information available on all of these center of excellence but the one that is very close to me because i'm also working on it is the artificial intelligence on education so one part of it is how do we provide uh, automatic questioning for a student so that he can 
increase his proficiency level specifically in a programming uh, environment or while he's learning a programming language so not only do we have to give him multiple questions questions that are not already available on in the internet but also evaluate him help him when he is stuck out and there should be some form of a communication also so that his results can also be given or rather seen by instructors so that they can also help him out that is the very basic gist of the artificial intelligence for education okay with that i'll stop if there are any questions i'll be happy to answer Do we have any questions from the audience? Yeah, hello, ma'am. This is Dr. Gaurav. Hi, Gaurav. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Uh, I have seen. Uh, I have missed one of your slide where you would be uh, showing some skeleton. So, can you reshare that slide? And I have. I have to ask one question on that. If you don't mind. Please give it a second. The network may be a little slow, but I hope you are able to see it now. Oh uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, the same slide. So, uh, just uh, just for the information, I would like to ask that what features that you have extracted from these images or skeleton that you have created using. So Kali? it's not the images that we are working on. It is the contiguous motion of. Uh, so we have taken small video clips basically, and then we are understanding the movement of the various joint points. these joint points are the basis of our feature from these joint points and their movements we i think there is a overlap of voice there was a need to i have closed my okay uh, i hope it's the voice is better now i don't know what i can do at this end is it is it audible you, am i audible is, to you yes okay. yes yes you are you are audible okay so on so, this type uh, of so from uh, the images okay. yeah yes we are focusing on simply the skeleton and the joints and the movements of these joints and we have you know initially for particular type of exercise so there are in geriatric there are six basic exercise one of them is like uh, hands up and down the other is a chair uh, while you sit down on a chair straight uh, by straightening your back of course then you move the other one is just simply leg movement so these exercises we have priorly defined their features now only for those exercises which we We, which we, when we spoke with physiotherapists, they said that these exercises are the most ones which affect our senior populations most, or they help with the senior populations, and they are the ones which you should first focus on. So, from those features that we found were related to the how our joints move and how much movement is allowed or is to be taken care of. Suppose a person is not able to move his arms properly. so those will be extracted from the various exercises that he is doing and we are not talking about every type of exercise available we are only talking about very specific physiotherapy recommended exercises right any uh, i hope i've answered your question gaurav ji Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you very thank much, you. and it is very much informative for me. Right. Thank you, Dr. Suma. Thank you so much, ma'am. For your beautiful presentation and uh, introducing your project to us uh, and uh, talking about the CO is 
as established by the JB education system. Thank you very much. Over to Samprakta. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for elaborating us with this project. It would be really helpful for students here and encourage them to do this kind of work in future. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now moving on. Uh, okay. Now moving on, I would like to invite our next speaker, uh, Mr. Ayush Singhal. He is a tech CSC undergraduate from JP Institute of Information and Technology as an, an ST intern, ex-mentor at Branding Catalyst and president at JIT Optica. I would uh, like to invite him for uh, elaborate us more on the sponsor projects. Yeah, thank you so much, ma'am, uh, for the introduction. And uh, like I thank you, the I thank the GIC as well to give me a chance to uh, speak on one of the auspicious day, World Entrepreneurs Day. And uh, yeah, so going forward, like I'd like to share my slide first. Just a So, is my screen visible? Yeah, it's visible. Yeah, so uh, I would like to talk about our project, which is CodeMate. Earlier it was Jarvis, and uh, uh, our supervisor is uh, Dr. Gaurav Verma, sir. So, CodeMate is our uh, AI-based smart programming assistant, which helps the developers in their programming journey. Like, uh, I'll, I'll firstly uh, like to show our team. So uh, from the right, this is me, and then it is Ishan Goswami and Vinay Patwar. So we three have started this project uh, like in September 2021. Uh, I'll just tell about the journey quickly, like how we started, how we got the idea about the project and uh, the steps, how we proceeded further. So. So it's uh, not a great, uh, uh, not long journey, but still I managed to put it up in a slide. So in the September 2021, uh, we got the initial idea about this project. Uh, at that time, the GitHub Copilot was launched. So we were very excited and we tried it on. We found it very cool. Like, uh, it, uh, uh, it, like it works on code completion part. And we saw like, uh, like, it helps the developers to build the products much faster. So uh, at that point of time only, we got the mail from the college uh, that an incubathon was being uh, uh, like organized by the GIAC, and we decided to participate in that. So in September, we participated and uh, registered our uh, like project. Uh, so it was so there were four rounds of the incubathon. I'll just tell them briefly. Uh, in the very first round, we have to submit our project idea in the format which was asked. And uh, in the next round, uh, we were uh, like asked to present the idea like in front of the JIT faculties and uh, other panel members. And uh, like in the third round, we were matched up with the investors, uh, the investors in the particular domain, and we presented our idea in front of them. And yeah, like in the final round, we were asked to build up the prototype and then we got uh, uh, like we presented in front of the chancellor sir uh, the pro chancellor sir and uh, we received the seed funding and then yeah like today uh, as uh, like if we talk about the today's status we are uh, almost uh, we have almost built up our mvp and very soon we will be launching it up like for the like like all the developers test it out so this was brief uh, uh, the journey Starting from September and October, we, when, we, uh, when we got selected from the top 15 teams, and in December, the, um, the third round took place. In January, we got the mail uh, for the final round, and then the DRID, which uh, Ma'am talked about, the Directorate of Research uh, and Innovation and Development, uh, selected our project. Uh, they selected the top five projects from all JITs, and uh, uh, like our project was one of them. And uh, we received the seed funding and uh, uh, incubation opportunity from the JIT. 
so yeah so like uh, we are very much fortunate enough to get this opportunity from the college itself because it's not just about the uh, like monetary support uh, it's all because of uh, this the motivation we got this mentorship um, uh, most important we see from uh, the jit faculties and uh, like, uh, like all the in the industry experts uh, like which help us to um, to make our like project uh, go further and we are hoping it would be becoming successful as well so yeah now i would like to uh, like give a brief demo of what we have built so far uh, like so the problem which we are focusing upon is uh, is like artificial intelligence for education only which i mentioned uh, like many students face difficulties when they join new companies or when they uh, like take up the new tech stacks so uh, so they do not uh, uh, difficulties in uh, like coping up with the code base or the syntax and and then many things so here uh, codemit comes in we uh, we have certain features which focuses upon the pain points of the developers we help them understand the uh, programming and make the journey fun and as well as productive as well so yeah this is you you can uh, consider codemit to be your uh, best ai assistant helper so this is a solution which we we have provided to the, the problem we uh, like as i said it is always available to make your journey easier and fun so we are making an entire development ecosystem which will be consisting of uh, a website an application a chrome extension and a visual studio code extension visual studio code uh, if you know about like this is an ide for programming so we are making uh, the entire developer ecosystem so that there is no restriction for a developer to uh, to get the benefit of the code mate like if he is using the website he can use like in the form of that if you if he is not uh, like uh like uh, like if he's not using the uh, the vs uh, code extension he can use the mobile application chrome extension so so there are tons of other uh, options are there so these are the major features which we have built so firstly this is an explain code and uh, i'll just uh, demonstrate as well in the next slide so the explain code uh, what explain code does is like if, if there there is a piece of code and you're not able to understand what exactly the code does like uh, like it may be written in some other language which you haven't uh, learned so far so uh, it uh, so with the help of our tool like the you can get the english statements uh, the explanation in the uh, the expression is simple english for the uh, code you have uh, the center so uh, it's like like pretty cool you can get the english uh, explanation for all the complex code you are not able to understand so next is language translator uh this also helps a lot because uh, if we like uh, let's say if we uh, if you're learning ruby and we already know python we can translate our uh, uh, like we can write in python and we can translate our python code into ruby and then we can uh, like understand oh uh, so in ruby uh, like this is how we uh, we can make this function this is how we can write this code so another feature is doc string writer uh, like no one uh, uh, like no one likes to uh, write the documentation for the code so with the help of our tool so they can uh, get their documentation ready with just a click of a button next is time complexity uh, like many a times we waste our time with uh, like in calculating the time complexities of the functions of the code which we have written and then we work on the optimization so now uh, like the developers can focus on the optimizing the code rather than wasting their time in uh, the calculating the uh, time complexity they can get the time complexity from our uh, tool and then ask question the we can ask the questions in simple english uh, statements and the the code mate can get the uh, code generated for the questions and lastly uh, a very uh, like good feature which we are excited upon is bug fixer uh, like there are many bugs which we not able to understand like uh, like leave behind the solving the bugs we not able to get it what exactly the bug is so uh, so, uh, so with the help of bug fixer uh, like there uh, like we are making two options firstly like the uh, developer can get the bug uh, like the error which uh, like is generating in simple english uh, like he can understand what exactly the error is in his program 
and nextly if he is not able to solve this uh, like bug he can get it fixed also with the help of the code mate so now uh, coming on to the working demo we so far we have made an uh, basic application of uh, like all the functionalities of visual studio extension as well so now i will be demonstrating the visual studio extension which we have made so far yeah so this is the visual studio extension and uh, like first feature which i talked about is nl to code natural language to code in which i have wrote down this four simple english like statements uh, i selected open the command palette and uh, write the command nl to code and within 5 seconds it generated the code of what i have asked the pick 10 random numbers sort the uh, numbers in descending order print the sorted numbers repeat two more times like whatever uh, the instructions i have given to the uh, like extension it generated the exact uh, the code in this language which i have asked this is explain code uh, i don't know what this function does i simply selected it open the command palette wrote down explain code and boom within 3 to 4 seconds i'll get the line to line explanation of what the code does see it is creating two list x and y uh, it, like it is iterating over the range 5 uh, you can see the for loop and in each in each iteration is generating a random number and then it is then using the random number to pick an element like isn't it super cool like we can get the english statement of all the complex words which uh, like currently we are facing with right this is translate code like in the comment section we have to write from uh, we have to translate from which language to which language because this is written from c++ to python this is c++ code we selected we open the command palette and wrote the command translate code and within few seconds this in python language we have got uh, what we have earlier written in c++ so this like this is a bug fixer which i talked about so you can see this is the buggy code in which this is these are highlighted uh, this uh, the well done should be in quotes and this a uh, like a and b are not declared so these are the errors now we selected it and it uh, it will get fixed and the the fixed code will be uh, generated see so these are the highlighted ones which uh, the extension have fixed it for ourselves but we have also built the uh, one more functionality which in which the like it uh, it generates the english statement for the bug uh, like which we are getting but it's not uh, in this video currently so this is a time complex one we can select uh, uh, like the code the root uh, and then by the command we can get the time complexity of that code see o n into k this is the time complexity of this function so this was the brief very brief demo of what we are building currently it's not even the one person of what our goal is like we are uh, building up very much uh, cool stuff uh, like we are coming up with more features and uh, like currently this is uh, in beta stage we have rolled out for some beta testers and based upon their uh, like feedbacks we are iterating upon the code and like we are making more changes and uh, very soon like uh, we will be um, like launching it for everyone to use it so to conclude uh, we make uh, like the job is earlier uh, to make the journey uh, because we only are the developers we face the problem ourselves so here the idea comes upon because we want uh, like our uh, like, uh, like we want to uh, like focus on building up products we want to focus on the ideas we are getting not because uh, like we are not able to uh, like like we don't have the, uh, that much expertise uh, like it doesn't mean we cannot build up the products so uh, our aim is to uh, make the software uh, development much easier and productive so that's it uh, i would like to keep it very much short uh, if you would like to connect with us this is the linkedin page and you can feel free to connect with us thank you so much sir this was very informative and valuable talk we are enlightened with your knowledge and insight i request participant to post their question in chat box okay if uh, there are no question i would like to move on with the session uh, now i would like to invite our next speaker dr gaurav verma uh, for talk on, on information on 
in Pupathon 2022. Uh, thank you, Samparikta, and uh, thank you, the organizers, for providing me time, a brief time for this uh, on the Words Entrepreneur Day. So, uh, as you have seen, uh, that Mr. Ayush Singhal and his team has got uh, the project um, in DRID, and that was uh, through our event that is that we have organized jic has organized uh, last year that with the name incubathon 1.0 and it was very successful um, around 35 teams were participated last year and from that in they have got several rounds and uh, every phase of that particular incubathon will provide the information and guiding the different teams to make make their presentations and make their make their project better and better so we have or we are we have organized this particular event in three phases three and four phases and the first phase was related to uh, the idea submission then second phase was related to providing mentorship and shortlisting of the ideas we have, we have assigned some of the mentors to the different teams and then uh, third stage was related to the uh, presentation in front of the uh, internal panel members so as just to provide the insight and different uh, information to make it better and finally we have we have presented to the some of the external entrepreneurs um, and also get information and uh, useful suggestions to make it presentable to the DRID team finally DRID have sponsored uh, this their projects uh, some of the teams were sponsored and uh, out of which one of one is of IU signal that he has presented under my mentorship so within with the same sequence we are now going to launch our second uh, version of the incubathon event that is incubathon 2.0 and it will be soon launched by the end of this month so i request all the students and uh, and the faculty members as well to wholeheartedly participate in that particular event to um, let the dream of our uh, chancellor manoj gwarji and our co chancellor honorable uh, uh, sir, so that uh, um, let let let's that decade would be an innovation decade. Thank you with this. Thank you so much, sir, for this information. If anyone is there to ask any questions, they can write it in the chat box. Okay. Now to conclude this great event, I would like to invite Dr. Ashwini Mathu to propose the vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, Shamprita. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. You are audible, sir. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, special thanks to uh, the event organizer, Professor Suresh Chandra, sir, and uh, Dr. Amar Pajapati to give me this opportunity to me to present the vote of thanks. And Shamprita, you are doing a wonderful job. You are managing it so nicely. So uh, I, on behalf of uh, JP Institute of Information Technology, the IIC cell and the JIC cell, would like to extend my sincere thanks to our Honorable Chancellor, sir, Professor S.C. Saxena, to uh, uh, our Co-Chancellor, sir, Professor S.C. Saxena, sir, to our Vice Chancellor, Professor Yogra Suji, and on the dignitaries who are associated in one way or the other in incubating or initiating this, this, this initiative of innovation at the campus. I would also like to extend my sincere thanks to the eminent speakers for today, our alumni, Ms. Uh, Ria, Mr. Aditya, and Mr. Sakhan, for providing the success story, uh, attending the students, the participants, about the, the, you know, the initiative process, the way how they proceeded further, how they translated their idea into uh, a vision. Uh, so truly, you people are the nation builder. And the one thing which I would like to uh, suggest based on the information which I received from you is, uh, entrepreneurship is a marathon which has no finish line. So uh, I personally, after attending the session of uh, Professor Tandon, uh, who has given us uh, insightful information about circular economy, about sustainable initiative, I can say that entrepreneurs can neither exhaust nor they can fail. They always learn. So it is important for all the students who are attending this initiative, this activity, this uh, uh, the, the gamuts of events which are organized by various faculty coordinators under IIC and GIC banner to understand that uh, the best way to have 
a good idea which you want to translate is to have many ideas and you know don't worry about failure because you just need to be right once to make it a big so uh, on this note i would like to extend my sincere thanks to dr sumadon um, mr ayush and dr gorak providing us insight about the initiatives of the uh, institution under various banners and uh, last but not the least uh, the iic president professor vibharani for her direction motivation and support in successful organization of the celebration activity of iic the world entrepreneurship day thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you thank you dr ashwini and uh, my thanks thank to you. professor vibharani for providing me this opportunity to coordinate this uh, event world entrepreneurship day i don't know how much justification i have done uh, to the event I tried my best, and thanks to Dr. Amarjit uh, and all the JIIC members who were present here for their support. This comes to end of today's session. Thank you very much. Satish sir, very well uh, executed and implemented, and I think we are able to successfully celebrate this Entrepreneur Day. <laughs> very well planned, yeah. Yes, sir. Very well organized. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, yeah. Thank you, Satish sir. Thank you, Majid sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Asmini sir. Thank you, Sadiq sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Now we end this event here.